Hi everybody, this is Dr. Lanny and welcome to Healing with Carnivore, my YouTube channel. Let me introduce myself. I'm a chiropractor, life coach, and teacher, and I've been dieting for the last 40 years. First the SAD diet, standard American diet when I was younger, then about 20, late 20s, early 30s, I became a vegetarian for about 10 years. Then I went to the Atkins diet and then back to the vegetarian diet with protein powders, a little bit of chicken and fish here and there. Uh, spirulina, and then I did the master cleanse to basically lose weight. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Make comments on this video, please. It'll help my channel. And then, of course, send it to your friends and family. This video is the carnivore diet part two. I'm going to talk about the common side effects, the common issues that people have, the common fixes that everybody uses or a lot of people use, and then exactly what I did on my carnivore journey. Now, this is my legal disclaimer. This presentation is not medical advice, nor can I give you medical advice. Everything here is for informational purposes only. You've got something wrong with your health issue, go see your doctor, please. Now, this is my opinion as well. After observing thousands of patients and their pain levels and their disease processes, sugar is a poison and is a huge factor in many of your diseases. Sugar is the ultimate gateway drug. Stop taking sugar, period. And if you eat the carnivore diet, it'll help you because you'll feel satiated and you won't crave the sugars after 30, 60 days anyway. So it's just completely awesome. Okay, what I'm going to do next is go to my PowerPoint presentation and then I may say hello to you at the end as well. But uh, enjoy the presentation. Okay, hang on. Let me change it over. Okay, let's get with the common side effects. The first one, diarrhea, keto, flu, and headache, and loose stool. So, yeah, if you jump right into this and don't do a transition time, you will definitely get diarrhea and loose stools. And some people get the keto flu. So, do the transition just a little bit slower. Eat more leafy greens for a week or two, and you'll get less of this. And if you do get it, just eat a couple of le uh, green leafy greens for you know, the next day or two, and that'll help curb it. Um, then you get skin issues, cramping, and nausea. So you get the skin issues. I got this, and it was like I would, all of a sudden my skin would be massively itchy in one place, and then it would be my leg, and then it would be my arm. It was like crazy, and it was almost violent itchy. I'd scratch it, and it would go away. I think that's oxalate dumping. And so if you don't know what that is, look it up on YouTube and you can figure, you'll get a good, long, nice explanation for it. Cramping happens because you're not eating the carbohydrates anymore, so you're not getting bloated and holding onto your water. So the water is going away. Now all of a sudden your salts and electrolytes are going away as well. So you're starting to get the cramping. So of course the solution to that is take some electrolytes, take some salt. And nausea is your body's just not you know, used to eating meat with fat in it. So you're getting that nausea. All these things go away after a couple of weeks for sure. And two months, they'll be gone or you'll be, you'll know how to kind of handle them. I felt hotter for sure on the carnivore diet. In fact, I still do. But what's really interesting is I don't have night sweats. I used to sweat every single night in bed. I don't do that anymore. I just feel warmer. Hot flashes and heart palpitations, that happened to me as well for two or three weeks. And I would eat a meal, and oh my God, the hot flash was, I knew know exactly what women go through now. And I would have the heart palpitations, that went away after two weeks as well. Dehydration, I think again, because you're not eating the carbohydrates, you're peeing all the water out, and so you just don't, you know, you don't have as much water inside of you, you feel like you're dehydrated cannot sleep. That happened to me. I had way more energy. So I couldn't sleep because my mind was active or whatever. I just had so much more energy. I didn't sleep as well. So my joint pain went away. So I don't know what happens to people if they get joint pain. Again, it might be oxalate or histamine reaction. Uh, but my joint pain went completely away practically. Cravings. I didn't have any cravings because I jumped right into it. And I ate a lot of fat, a lot of protein right away. So my cravings went away pretty fast. But if you do get cravings, you know, eat a few blueberries or have a, some dark leafy greens again. And hopefully after 30, 60 days of being satiated, your cravings will go away. Hungry, uh, that's because you're not eating enough. I was never hungry. I ate between four and five pounds of meat every single day for over two months. Oh my God, it was crazy amount of meat that I was eating. But so I was absolutely positively never 
hungry at all. If you're hungry, you're probably not eating enough. Half a pound of meat a day is not going to cut it, folks. You're going to need to up that amount. Some people feel tired, I think, because they're just not, they're, they're looking for that, you know, the energy jolt from the sugar, from the carbohydrates, and now you don't have it, so your body's got to kind of work its way up to it. You'll be fat adapted, and insulin, you know, your insulin will be more adapted as well, so you won't be tired after a while. I always had lots of energy, so it just, right away, I got energy. Better smell, that blows me away. Some people smell better. I don't mean their body smells better. I mean, they can smell other people. They can smell garbage a mile away. They can smell meats a mile away. I mean, their smell just gets better. Okay, what are some common issues that people have? They might be a little bit different. Do not feel hungry. I never felt hungry because I was eating so much meat at one time that uh, I never felt hungry ever again. But one of the common issues is almost the opposite of this, is that not eating enough. Again, I was saying that half a pound of meat per meal, probably not going to cut it. And people have this thing about, you know, restricting salt. Don't restrict your salt. Remember, you're peeing all your electrolytes out because you're not bloated anymore and you're not holding on to them because of the carbohydrates. So you're going to need to eat some salt, some electrolytes. I say don't eat as much processed meat, but if that's all the meat you can afford and that's all the meat you can do, just make sure you don't get the ones that have sugar in it. The sugar stuff will keep you, you know, keep you addicted, keep you looking for the, 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 um, the carbohydrates. So don't eat the ones with sugar in it if you have to eat the processed meat. I definitely had cramping. Cramping happens. And again, this is because you got to kind of find that balance of the electrolytes and the salt. Too much dairy. I got. I went. I said, "Whoa! I have a. Uh, I can eat dairy. I can have heavy cream in my coffee. I started eating it. Cheese. I'll have the cheese. Well, I got totally, you know, like um, it just didn't work for me. All of a sudden, my nose was clogged. I did get a headache from eating dairy. It just didn't work. So I don't eat any dairy anymore. But don't eat too much dairy. Eating the rendered fat. Now, what's the rendered fat? Rendered fat is that liquid fat, like say you're cooking hamburger and on the bottom of the pans, all that liquid fat, that's rendered fat. That will definitely, in my opinion, it did for me, give you almost instant diarrhea or instant loose stool. So I don't eat rendered fat anymore. Uh, urinary, free, as I said, I peed the first couple of nights, like all night long. Every hour I got up to pee and it was a lot of water that I was peeing at night. So I peed all the time for like four days and I got rid of all the water weight. So that happens. And then spices, rubs, and sauces. I just eliminated them all, mostly because a lot of them have sugar in it, but it also just kind of triggered me wanting to eat carbohydrates. So I just, to get rid of the trigger, I just said, screw it. I'm going to just put salt on my food, and that's it. Weight gain, but looser clothes. Now, interesting for me is I didn't really gain any weight, but I didn't lose any weight. I was 210 pounds, stayed 210 you know what? I lost seven inches off my belly and two inches off of each thigh, almost within a month. I didn't lose any weight, but my clothes fit me way different. It was a really great experience, actually, but I wanted to lose that 10 pounds, but I didn't lose it at all until I did some other things. I'm going to do a whole other video on how I lost the weight. Medications. Got to watch this, folks, because a lot of people tell me that they're you know, they're taking high blood pressure meds. Now their blood pressure's down. They're still taking the med and they have to be careful of the, the doses and stuff. So you got to check this out if you're taking medications. Maybe your diabetes meds won't, you don't need as much. The, you know, so you got to check your medications. And then people think like, I need variety. And I did. I wanted to have the dairy. I wanted to have the fish. I wanted to have the pork and chicken. You know, whatever, I wanted to have that, that variety, and I just ate a whole lot of variety here and there. But I, what I found out was that the dairy killed me. The uh, chicken doesn't agree with me anymore. Pork was okay, but it didn't, I didn't feel the best on it. I felt the best when I was just eating red meat. And then people think like, oh, I can have a cheat day. You might be able to have a cheat day. If you're that moderator, if you can eat a little bit of carbo or eat a little bit of fruit, whatever, you might be able to. Me personally, I cannot do a cheat day. It immediately throws me into my addictive mode. Before I know it, I'm eating carbohydrates again. So I I really, I've had a cheat day here and there, but it wasn't a cheat day on purpose. I just can't do it. I, I try not to do it. And some people get to a point where they don't like the taste of meat. 
And that happens to some people, especially after the V-I-R-U-S, you know what I mean? And um, what you do is you just eat whatever you can. If you have to eat chicken, fish, whatever, put some ghee on it, put some butter on it so you get the fat. You know, just transition three or four days, you'll be liking meat again and you'll be okay. And then some people quit too soon. I think you got to do this for 90 days if you really want to see some big changes in your body. I mean, why are you doing this? I'm doing it because I was getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker from eating vegetables and carbohydrates. So I had a big why. You know, why are you doing it? Just to lose weight, you know, you may need to up your why a little bit, but don't quit too soon. You got to give it 90 days. Social situations are an issue for sure. I made sure, I'm going to say this a couple times, I ate a big meal before I went to social situations. That way, I was just full. I ate, then I could just eat a little bit of meat, whatever they had at the party, and I wasn't worried about cheating at the party. And I didn't talk about that I was a carnivore with very many people. I just never said anything. Not getting the support you need. Now, I'm going to say this, is that you have to talk to your family and say, hey, I'm doing the carnivore diet. You may agree or not agree. That's okay. But please, you know, don't eat the sugar. You can eat it in front of me, don't, but don't tease me with it. Just eat it, you know, and I'm going to be okay if you just don't tease me with it. So I need your support. Okay, so what are some common fixes that we all could use? Every, remember that everybody is different. So I may mention some common fixes and they may or may not work for you. Uh, so everybody does this just a little bit different. But one of the fixes that I found that worked great for me is I limited the types of meat that I ate. I basically, ran, after two months, I ate red meat and red meat, and that was it. I had hamburger and, you know, meat and steak, and, I, and then I had steak and I had hamburger, and that was it. I also didn't eat the rendered fat anymore, and I eat, you know, butter and ghee. Also, some people need to eat more meals at first. Now, I went to two meals, which was, you know, 18-6 uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, but people need to eat three meals if they need to do it because they can't eat that much meat at one, at one sitting. Eat more meals at first. If you have to do three, go for it. I mean, there's no right way to do this. And I would think most people, this is true, eat more meat than you think. I had to eat four and five pounds of meat every single day to feel satiated, to feel full, to feel good. I mean, that blows my mind that I was eating that much meat. And then you gotta find the balance of electrolytes and salt. Remember, you're getting rid of all your water, you're peeing it all out. So now you don't have those electrolytes in there, so the cramping happens, and so now you gotta find that balance. And one of the things that was interesting to me is that some electrolytes didn't work for me, others worked better for me, so, I had to try two or three different kinds of electrolytes and I had to find, you know, I use the Redmond salt like everybody's talking about and that really, really works good for me. So I had to find, but you gotta, I'm, in, I'm always mixing and matching that balance too, by the way. Eat more fat and more eggs. Eggs, I think, is awesome for people. It fills you up, gives you great nutrition and you want to eat more eggs. Hey, some I have a friend that eats, you know, six to 12 eggs every single day. He eats butter, he puts ghee on it, he eats a lot of fat as long, along with his eggs. And there you go, eat more butter and more ghee. Some people are eating like this whole stick of butter every single day, and I think I'm doing that only with ghee. So I'm having three or four tablespoons of ghee every single day, and my body just loves it. Now this is something to help you with the diarrhea uh, or the loose stools, is eat, cook your meat up and then cool it down to like room temperature. So eat your meat at room temperature seems to help me for sure. Uh, bone broth, I love bone broth. I love it, love it, love it. So I, we make a lot of bone broth. Seems to really balance me out, takes away the diarrhea, takes away the cramping. I don't know, I just get so much out of eating bone broth. And then this is really, 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 really important that I mentioned this is important. Plan your meals. Go shopping and get a whole weeks worth of meat. I cook four or five pounds of meat at a time and then I have it in the refrigerator so if I get a little hungry I can just dip into that meat, you know, put it in the microwave and I got my hamburger right there and it really helps me a lot. Now what's also interesting is what works on day five may not work on day 60. So I'm finding myself completely and always tweaking my carnivore food intake. How much food I take, what kind of meat I'm eating, 
you know, steak works better now than used to be hamburger worked great. Now I'm doing more butter and more ghee. I don't eat any rendered fat. I mean, it just tweaks, you know, the electrolytes I changed, I found something that works way better, et cetera, et cetera. And I mentioned before, but you got to get the support of your family and you can't just assume you got to sit them down and say, Hey guys, you know, you know, you got to support me on this, you know, and, and don't tease me with your ice cream or whatever. Eat, just eat it, but don't tease me with it. And then also support groups. And I'll talk more about this on the last page, but get online, get into what, you know, YouTube or if you're a TikTok or whatever, find your support groups. Maybe there's a meetup group around you. Gotta get in those support groups. In my opinion, I watch a couple of videos every day just to keep me totally motivated. Also take pictures of yourself. I didn't because truthfully, I was so frustrated with dieting. I figured this wasn't going to work for me. And I really, really wish I had taken pictures because my body has completely changed. Now it's nine months and it's really changed. But even after a month, it really, really changed. And I had wished I'd had before and after pictures. As I said before, eat before social gatherings. That way it just takes all cravings, all weirdness out of food. I don't even think about food while I'm at a social gathering. It totally balances me out. And you know what? If you can't figure it out, go simple. Go back to basics. Stop and just start eating red meat again. Just go back and eating. Get eat that four or five pounds. Eat more meals. You know, if this intermittent fasting thing is not working for you, or if all of a sudden you're craving things. Just stop and go back to eating more red meat and eat more meals and it's all good. You can always go backwards. All right. So what did I do? After two months, I ate only red meat mostly, like 90% of the time. I'll tell, talk a little bit about what I did do, but 90% of the time I eat hamburger and ribeye steak. And that was pretty much it. I kept it simple. One meal a day, 1.5 meals a day, really. I ate at three o'clock. And then I'd eat a little bit something at six. That's so that hand to mouth kind of thing, you know, uh, at watching TV at night or whatever would go away. I did Redmond salt to taste. Um, I made sure I balanced out my electrolytes. That's a little tricky. So you have to always be playing with it for sure. I drank water and we have filtered water and I drank a lot of water and I drank the water when I was thirsty. And definitely, I think, look, I think fat is the healing principle. You got to eat more butter, more ghee. You got to eat more fat. I love eating the fat. I'm totally fat adapted now, so I'm not getting the diarrhea or the weirdness with it. I just love it. And the fat just kind of heals me. And I'm losing weight eating the fat. Can you imagine that? And what I also do is I do yoga every day. I walk every day and I swim almost every day, at least five days a week. I do that. And then I, this is one of the things I really loved, and I'm going to do a whole thing on losing weight, but I entered the, I started being able to do the high intensity exercise and I do that twice a week. And the reason why I was able to start to do this is because I wasn't getting injured now eating carnivore. I couldn't do it before because if I did it, I got injured every time I did this high intensity. Now I can do the high intensity. I just absolutely love it. And I, of course, meditate every single day and have been meditating yeah, since 1977, almost every single day. So got to get into the meditation, folks. It really works. And then the fasting is what's really great. I do pretty much a 24, but 18.6 is my common. And kind of what I do is I 18 hours of fasting and then I start eating around. I, what I do it differently. Five days a week, I go 24, so 20 hours of fasting. And then I eat around three o'clock and then I eat again around six o'clock. During the weekends, I do 18, six, so 18 hours of fasting. Then I might have a meal at, you know, two o'clock a little bit earlier, and then I'll have another meal at five or six o'clock with my wife. So I basically am doing that one and a half, two meals per day. Monday through Friday, I'm strict red meat, period. That's what I do. Weekends, you know, my wife's cooking, so she might throw in a little fish or a little, no, never chicken anymore. I don't, I don't do chicken, uh, but fish will be there. And that's so great. And but you know what? Here again, I always, 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 always 100 percent of the time eat a full meal before I go out to socialize. I know I'm going out to dinner, but I still eat a full meal because restaurant food just never fills me up. Doesn't do it for me. So for support, I think you got to watch those videos on YouTube. Ken Berry, Nutrition with Judy, Sean Baker, and there's so many more people now. Look in my notes below this. I'm going to post some people who you can go to watch. Please like, subscribe, and comment 
uh, on my video. Make sure you share it with your friends and family. And thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate it. And guess what, folks? You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. If you want some coaching, please email me and I'll give you a free consultation to see if we're a match. If we're a match, we'll go forward. My email, ons at, proton, ons at protonmail.com. And that's Oscar Nancy Sam or Om Namah Shivaya. God dwells within you as you. Thank you so much for watching this video. And like I always say, allow your inner light to shine. Let it shine bright so it guides you home. Have a great day and eat the meat, folks. Bye-bye now.